Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for joining us. So let's get started. I've mentioned this in a previous video. If you're doing any kind of 3D modeling, be sure to hold shift before you open your file. However, today we're not doing 3D modeling. We're gonna look into V-carving. When you're entering your information in these boxes, if you need to convert it to a decimal and you have a fraction in mind, just put the fraction in there and hit the equal sign. Hit the equal sign on the keyboard and watch what happens. The Aspire program converts it for you, saves you the headache. Now after you got your decimal, put in the whole number. That'll work in any of Vetric software and any box that you enter numbers into. Just keep that in mind. All right, let's get on with the job setup. Our Z zero position is gonna be set to the machine surface. And this is a single sided job. For our XY datum position, we're going to set it to the bottom left hand corner however you can set it wherever you like in the middle top left top right bottom right that's just telling the program where the router bits going to start from if you need to set an offset do that right here. The next box, since we're not doing 3D, is pretty much irrelevant. And then we have the appearance box. I use pine, so that's the one I'm going to pick. But as you can see, there's several to choose from. Okay, today we're going to look at how to get the desired effect in VCarve. I'm going to open up a file I already have created. It's the exact same picture side by side. Now, since I'm importing something that I've already created, the whole job setup will change. For this tutorial, that's no big deal. So if you notice, we have the exact same picture. Now we're going to run a V-carve on one of them. 
so you need to highlight it pink tap that icon and go to V carve and this is our job setup we're going to start at zero we're going to use a max depth of we're going to start with a pretty large number 0.9 Now we're going to select our bit. We're going to use a 90 degree V bit. Now we're going to check our feeds and speeds and then hit apply. We are not going to use a clearance tool. And now we're going to calculate. Now let's preview the toolpath. And add some color in there. And if you notice, it's kind of deep. Okay, let's try it again at a half inch. Make sure you reset your preview. It's starting to look a little better. Okay, now to make one change, we're going to add a box around the other one. Take note of how one box can change the whole outlook of the picture. Easiest way to make a box, left click and drag. Okay, now we need to generate some G-code for it. We're going to go back to the V-Carve. After we select the flower and the box, that is key. The job setup will be exactly the same. Now calculate toolpath. Now you're going to reset your preview and preview all toolpaths. Now we can add some color see what it's going to look like. And there we have two different G-codes generated for the same flower that look totally different. Now let's put in a reasonable flat depth. We're going to go with 0.05.
make sure you reset. So any time that you're doing a V-carve that's represented on the right, it's recommended to use a large area clearance tool that'll help reduce the time that it actually takes to get that carve done. That's considered a pocket carve and it generally takes a lot longer than the one on the left. Do you notice the tool piling marks around the flower? Now you need to ramp plunge moves about a quarter of an inch. Some CNC bits are not made to go straight down so it's good to ramp plunge moves. Notice the change after we changed it from offset to raster. You don't really see them lines around the flower anymore. All right, let's talk about raster angle. Pay attention to which way the bit is traveling. Okay, notice which way the bit is traveling. It's going pretty much up and down on the screen. That's done by raster angle. Right now we have it set at 90 degrees. But if you need your bit to go left and right, all you have to do is change that to a zero. We 
and now you see it's traveling left and right. So for V-Carbon, for me, usually I, I run a flat depth of 0 0.05 through 0 0.09, tends to get the best results. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, Please leave them in the comment section.